then the other question is um, with a double mastectomy. And again, I'm asking general questions. I'm not like having an appointment or anything. I don't want to I hear you. Take, take, you know, charge of this uh, conversation. In the case of a double mastectomy, does the woman still have, um, is still at risk of even if a little percentage of breast cancer or, or uh, secondary breast cancer? Uh, right. Yeah, secondary breast cancer. So th that's a good question. So unfortunately, nothing in the world of medicine or really in the universe is absolute, right? Mm -hmm. So nothing can, no one can tell you you have absolutely no risk, but it's the closest you can come to no risk especially if you haven't had a breast cancer diagnosis before. So it reduces your risk of breast cancer to about 1% to 2% is what I've been reading in the literature. Mm -hmm. But that also means that you are 98 to 99% not going to make a breast cancer down the line, which are really good odds. I think the chances of making a breast cancer from LCIS diagnosis after prophylactic mastectomy, I've never seen mm -hmm. that in my practice, to mm -hmm. be honest. But I'm sure somebody out there has experienced that because that's just the way the, the world is. Does, L, now that you were talking, does LCIS become invasive if left alone or is it a completely different? That's a good question also. So anytime we see LCIS on a biopsy, and LCIS is often found just by chance. Oh, it's know. not something, right? It's not something that we see on imaging. DCIS often leaves little calcifications. It leaves little footprints that we can find. LCIS and lobular carcinomas too, kind of, they're harder, much harder to see yeah. on imaging. So LCIS, like I said, is often found by chance. And when it's found, it's always excised. It's always removed. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's about a 15% chance that right next door, there could be a carcinoma, an actual cancer. That being said, LCIS is not considered precancerous. Oh, I see. So it, it okay. Okay. If it grew, let's say if it grows, it still grows as LCIS, mm -hmm. as not in, as, 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 as these cells that are not spectacular, but they're also not cancer. Right. So LCIS functions more as a marker to say, mm. oh, look, this breast made these abnormal lobular cells. This is a marker that this, these breasts, actually, because if you have LCIS on one side, the risk of breast cancer is, this, is the same on both breasts. So it's really just a marker. Okay. It doesn't mean that if you leave it there, it's necessarily going to turn into a breast cancer. I see. Okay. Yes. So I'll, I'll, so when, when we see DCIS, for instance, the ductal type, and we remove that, we want to see negative margins all around that. For LCIS, we don't do that. We don't go back for negative margins. We just want to know that there's not a cancer where that biopsy was. Mm -hmm. okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes That's sense. Confusing. No, it makes sense. It's just everything is just so, yeah, overwhelming. Um, um, one final question and we'll move on. Since uh, lobular and L LCIS are very difficult to find in imaging, what are, and I'm very pro um, follow-ups, six months follow-ups, I'm not against it at all, but I'm, I'm, my, I'm just curious, what if, what if I do my imaging as good as I can and then they can't find anything because of the shape and the type of, of, of cancer or of the cells in the case of LCIS? What's, what's the point? <laughs> I know my question is what's very... The point? Oh, so the answer to that is just because you have LCIS does not mean you're going to make a lobular cancer. So lobular carcinomas are quite rare. Only about 10 to 15% of breast cancers that we see are actually lobular in nature meaning it starts in those lobules that make milk. Mm -hmm. Most breast cancers start in the ducts. ducts. Yeah. So that's why, one, we, we, it's not that lobular carcinoma is invisible. They're just a little, they're harder to see, but you still should have your imaging because it will pick it up. And like I said, it, it is 85% of the time, it's a ductal carcinoma that women have. Okay. Therefore, you need yeah your checkups. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
Um, changing the subject a little bit. <laughs> I'm so curious to talk with you about some myths that mm. exist around breast cancer and what causes it and, and all that. I know that deodorant, like some people just swear by it, don't wear it, don't this, don't do that. Some others will say coffee, I don't know. Um, even, even having a mammogram or having a biopsy, I've, I've heard uh, more than I would want to, um, will cause breast cancer because of radiation or in the case of the biopsy, I think because it spreads the cells, I mean, something like that. So would you, would you tell us more about those myths? Sure. And, and so there's, there's, them a lot, us? <laughs> there's a lot of myths out there. I actually give a talk on this. Awesome. So I'm going to look up a little bit because I have some of the myths that I have. So mammograms, mm. I get that question at least 10 times a week in my office. Do mammograms cause cancer? My aunt told me her mammogram caused her cancer. There's absolutely no evidence that mammograms cause cancer. Mammograms are life-saving. Okay? That is my biggest message anytime I go and do a public health talk is to tell women that mammograms are life-saving. So we have seen a decrease in the mortality rate of breast cancer of 40% since 1990, which is a massive decrease in, in mortality, meaning how many women die. And that's directly correlated to how much better mammograms have gotten mm. over the years. And now we have the added benefit of 3D mammograms, mm. which make it even easier to see through the breast and have actually decreased the number of biopsies. So not only are mm. they increasing the number of cancers that are caught, they're decreasing the number of biopsies. Mm -hmm. So skipping a mammogram every other year would miss 30% of the cancer that has been found, 30% of the cancers that are found. Mm. So that's what I got to say about mammograms. They are very, very important. They're the most powerful tool we have to battle breast cancer and find the disease early so that we can provide cures. Awesome. So other myths that I've heard, so deodorant. Yeah. <laughs> deodorant gets a bad name. Yeah. There's no hard data that deodorant causes breast cancer. Um, the, the thought behind that myth is that there's aluminum in breast cancer and that the aluminum can cause like an estrogen-like hormonal mm -hmm. reaction or go in and clog the lymph nodes. Um, there's been no study to show that. That being said, if my patient is you know, concerned about aluminum and would rather use a natural deodorant, go yeah. for it. I have no issue with that, Absolutely. right? So that's that's kind of my message with a lot of these things. If it's something that causes you pause and feels like you shouldn't be putting it in your body, then don't. What I have issue with is when a young woman comes in with a new diagnosis and blames herself mm -hmm. because she did something. Mm -hmm. For instance, I remember... Um, a couple of years ago on a, on a popular celebrity's um, blog, they, they very popular celebrity put up a, um, an article about underwire bras causing breast cancer. Right. And there's absolutely no such science to show that at all. And I remember being angry about it. And my husband said, well, what's the big deal? And I said, the big deal is that, I assure you in two weeks, somebody's going to come in saying, this is, I've been wearing an underwire bra my whole life. This is mm -hmm. why this happened. And that's exactly what, mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that these myths can hurt people. A lot of them, it's, yeah. it's the beliefs that it's, it's our fault that something happened Yeah, with a lot of them, except mammograms, mammograms, you got to get. <laughs> because, um, because again, like you were saying before, we are eager to find an answer, right? And usually that answer goes back to us. We did it. We caused it. It's my fault. I should have done this. I shouldn't have done that. And the truth is, it's it's just it just doesn't work that way. It's not one factor that would cause something to happen, and certainly not the type of bra you wear. <laughs>